Hello everybody! Today I am going to be reacting to my first ever book haul because I think it's gonna be funny. This idea was inspired by Books and Lala. I will link her down below. A couple years ago she did a challenge where she would go back and watch her original book hauls in order to see if she'd actually read those books and then she challenged herself to read those books and she did it for an entire year. Great project. Like I said, link down below. Um, I'm just gonna do it once because that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Before I get into the video I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the Black Lives Matter movement that is happening all around the world that was instigated by the murder of George Floyd. As a non-black booktuber and creator I would like to first and foremost encourage you to please subscribe to black booktubers. It means something that I can use my platform to highlight this movement but I think the most important thing I can do is to make sure that my followers know about other diverse voices. I am half Latina, half white. That is an experience I can talk about but right now I can't talk intelligently or from experience about the Black Lives Matter movement. So I'm linking down below to two of my longtime friends and favorite booktubers Francina Simone and Christina Marie who I absolutely love but I'm also going to link down below to a new creator. Their YouTube channel is Reading in the Clouds and I encourage you to go check them out because we need to encourage booktube to be a place full of diverse creators and especially in this moment I want to do everything I can to support and embrace and welcome like heartily welcome new black booktubers. So subscribe to those people down below. Don't stop there but those are just some of my recommendations and I'm also going to link down below to a website that explains things you can be doing right now whether you have money, whether you don't, whether you feel comfortable going to protests or you don't. Personally I don't currently feel comfortable going to protests because I live with immunocompromised people and we're still in the middle of COVID-19 which obviously adds so much complexity to everything. So I'm not going to be protesting but there are lots of other things that I can be doing. I'm also of course reading books by black authors right now. Books change us forever. They can educate us, they can show us about experiences that are not our own. I am currently reading Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race, a book I've had on my shelves for far too long and I'm already learning so so much. So I encourage you to pick up books by black authors um, about the black experience but also like yes nonfiction books that educate us but also please read books about black characters that are living happy lives so that we can start to normalize and support all sectors of black writing in the publishing world. I'm working on ideas for my YouTube channel to better support the Black Lives Matter movement moving forward in the next few weeks, months, years, life. So look forward to those videos and Thank you for listening to this and please 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 click on the resources in the description. Now let's jump in to roasting me for the books I haven't read. <laughs> so I have a playlist of all the book hauls I've ever made. You can click up where the little thingy appears if you want to watch some of my past book hauls, my first book hauls, but I seem to remember that back then my thumbnails had the books that were going to be in the book haul. So I'm not gonna look and god I hope this works but I'm not, I don't want to spoil the, all of the books before I even do it so I'm just gonna scroll to the bottom of that playlist and I'm just gonna like click on the bottom section of my screen and I hope okay an ad perfect <laughs> hello everybody today I am really excited to do this okay video. so first of all I'm wearing my mom's <laughs> cardigan <laughs> um this is from December 29th 2012 so eight years ago and it was right after Christmas. So this was when I was living in Honduras and I had very poor access to English books. My dad was um, having to visit Canada for his job every few months and I remember giving him like a huge list of books that I would love for Christmas to like he could pick whichever ones um, and that is how I got these English speaking books to Honduras. That I'm gonna start with is the book that I most wanted this Christmas. I don't know why but okay it's really I'm hyping it up and so I really hope that that means that I read it. <laughs> I'm just craving this book. It's Ready Player One <gasps> by Ernest Klein. Okay so great. 
great. <laughs> so that first book, Ready Player One by Ernest Klein, I did read and I read it almost right away um, because it was my favorite book of 2013 or 2012. I don't, I don't remember. I love that book. Um, I haven't reread it since. So would it hold up? I'm not sure, but I really, really loved it. Cool. The next book is something else that I've been really excited about. Okay. Again, when I hype it up that much, that it's a little stressful because if I then don't read it, I feel like a hypocrite. But to be fair, I'm really excited about every book that I buy. So I'm a hypocrite, I guess, for all of the books I haven't read. Oh, adaptation. And I've never read it. So it's here now. Cool. Sailor Moon. Okay, I don't know how to so I have the Sailor Moon manga. I actually now have the first two volumes. I love graphic novels. You may have noticed I talk about them all the time, but I don't talk about manga that often. I just never got into manga and I'm not saying it's never gonna happen. Um, I love graphic novels and manga is obviously in the same illustration comics world. So I could very much see that happening, but so far I just haven't gotten into it. And I've tried a few different times with Sailor Moon, with Bakuman. Um, I did read it and I also got the second volume and read it, but I just didn't continue, but I did read it. It is H.G. Wells' The okay. Time Machine. It's a really short classic, which is really good too. So I should be able to read it pretty quickly. <laughs> Uh, great reasoning. I have read The Time Machine. I think I've now read it like three times and I love The Time Machine. I think it's an excellent classic. I think that it is a very accessible classic in its writing style. It's very short and it's very interesting. Like philosophically, it makes you think a lot. It makes you wonder a lot. The main character is an idiot. <laughs> it makes constant mistakes, but it's exciting to watch him kind of fumble during his time travel. And I think the book takes a couple, I think the book is largely not what people would expect. Um, I really enjoyed it. So gosh, I've read them all so far. This will, I bet you just go downhill, but so far, so good. Now the next two books, I'm kind of scared to show you, but the truth is I am ecstatic that I own them. The reason that I didn't buy them before is because they're adult nonfiction. Okay. <laughs> So I just said that I'm about to show two books that are adult nonfiction. And this was a time when I mainly read young adult fiction. So it was pretty different for me to be trying to read it. And honestly, I this year I've read a lot of nonfiction, but I know that previously most of the reading I've done is fiction. So I'm my, my expectation is low nothing to do with. I'm scared to show you because they are pretty controversial. They are God is not great. How religion oh, poisons everything by Christopher Hitchens and the God Delusion by this Richard is Dawkins. So interesting. Now, religion is a core belief. Core beliefs cannot be changed, and if you insult someone's core beliefs, they'll pretty much hate you forever. <laughs> so I want you guys to know that I'm not trying to be insulting in any way. This is just for the quest of knowledge. I just want to learn. <laughs> I love philosophy. I love conceptual stuff. And religion in particular kind of interests me, the way it works and the way that people view it. And this is just one view. So I am really excited to read these. Nice. Please don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, a, that's really interesting. I haven't fully read either of those books. I did, f I took a couple of months, I really remember in my undergrad, where I was reading them, but not from start to finish. Hello, what's up? I completely messed up. Okay. I was supposed to have been home quite a long time ago. To do what? Uh, well, because I had bread rising. Right, yeah, I'm in the middle of filming a video right now, but I can do it soon. Is it um, one loaf or two? It's two loaves. Okay. And it just needs to be formed and mm -hmm. preheated and... Done. I remember flipping through them, reading passages, highlighting passages, but I didn't fully read them. I am an, a I am an atheist, it's true. <laughs> and it is not something I talk about on my channel very often because I know that it can offend a lot of people. And very similar to my position uh, eight years ago, I wasn't reading those books to offend people and I um, I actually, here's a fun fact. I've hidden those books behind all my other books because I fear what people would say to me, especially because Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens are controversial figures. I don't agree 
with a lot of the things that both of them have said. I agree with some of them, the things they've said. Um, and so, yeah, I don't display those books publicly because I don't want, uh, I don't want to offend anyone. But I wasn't reading them to offend anyone. I was reading them to get more perspective on something that I care about. I care about being an atheist. I don't believe in religion and I don't believe in God. I have done a lot of research into it. Um, since buying those books and looking in different places and and it is of course something very personal and so I've th thought a lot about it just what it means to me um, Wow Ariel edgy content back in 2012 so the next book is kind of a replacement it is Marcus Sedgwick uh oh midwinter blood what happened was that I asked for blood red snow white by the same author but my dad couldn't find it so instead he just picked up this one yeah so I remember this <laughs> and I ended up trying, I tried to start reading it and I just wasn't into it and I ended up donating that book. So I haven't seen that book in years. I do not own that book. I donated it. It has moved on to another life. So I'm going to count that as a green check. The next book I have was a complete surprise. Never heard of it, oh. but excited to read it. It's Ruby Red oh. by Kirsten Gear. Gear. Mm, it's about time travel, so my dad really thought it would be fun to here. get me a random book, and I agree. Getting random books is fun because you don't know anything about them, and I don't know anything about That's it. Really I read cool. the flap, and it just says it's about time travel. So I didn't remember that my dad just randomly got me that book. I, for some reason, just thought, you know, I, I heard about it on Booktube somewhere and had asked for it. I ended up loving that book. I've also read that one. Things are going so much better than I thought. <laughs> Um, yes, I have read that book. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a very fun YA adventure story. It wasn't very deep. It wasn't very complex, but it was fun. Um, and so I, I don't think I ever read the sequels though. Um, I'm just bad at reading series. It's not because of Ruby Red. There are a lot of books where I love them, like The Raven Boys, and I just didn't read the sequel, or Maze Runner I enjoyed, never read the sequel. I just hate series. <laughs> Ebook. I bought Warm Bodies by Isaac oh, Marion. The movie is coming out in February, and I'm I still can't see it's that. It's like, one. okay, a zombie falls in love with a human. It I have not read this one. Um I bet you a big part of the reason that I haven't read it is because I had I got it as an ebook and I don't really read ebooks. I listen to a lot of audiobooks and I re love reading physical copies, but just reading ebooks is not I don't enjoy the process, so I really prefer to read a physical copy and I never bought a physical copy of Warm Bodies because uh because of yeah, because it was I had already bought it as an ebook, but I never ended up reading it. So, okay. Fine. I don't feel bad about that though. I don't care about reading it anymore. Well, the next books I didn't officially get for Christmas, but I bought, I opened them okay. near the Christmas period, so they feel like Christmas books to me. The first one is Glamorous Illusions by Lisa T. Berggren, and I won this. This is hilarious because I don't remember this book. <laughs> I, I won it in a giveaway, apparently. I definitely didn't read it and I definitely donated it because I have not seen that book in years. And the next two books I got from my best friend, Raylene uh, from Pet Foot and <laughs> So Raylene no longer makes videos, but she now runs the Reading Rush with me and we have a book podcast together. So this is cute. What did Raylene get me? And did I read it? Oh no. <laughs> Putting prongs of seven. Thank you so much, Raylene. The first one is something. Oh, it is the Marbury Lens by Andrew okay. Smith. Absolutely thrilled about? about this situation here. If you so, we buddy read this book, and we both hated it. I don't know what I would think of it now, but I really disliked this book back then. I thought it was overly violent. I thought the plot was really boring. I thought the characters were really um, like non redeemable. They just, I just really disliked that book and so did Raylene. So that was a funny experience. We still talk about that experience. Super happy. The final book is right here. Oh, I haven't an opened unboxing. it yet. For this one was a book 
that we love. Just a book that meant oh something God, to I'm us and that we wanted to share with each other. Hint number one, the cover is symbolic. Next, it's told through a unique perspective. So I was thinking and thinking and I realized that a book that she has raved on and on about to me was The Book Thief by, oh god, I forget the name of the author, Marcus Azuzukitsa. And I read that the story is told by death. That's a pretty unique perspective. Oh so that's gonna be my guess, The Book Thief. Uh -oh. I'm really excited. I don't even know. Here we go. This is happening right now. Oh my god. It's the book. Shit. <laughs> okay. Haven't read it. it. Where is it? I'm scared I donated it. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, oh god. Raylene, I'm sorry. <laughs> Raylene, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, I feel bad. Okay, here's the situation. <laughs> I have not read the book, Thief, and I'm pretty sure I donated it because I definitely can't find it, and... Here's the situation. Even though Raylene sent this book to me, obviously with a lot of love, and even though it was one of her favorite books, there was two things going on here. The first and most important factor is that I have an irrational fear, it's irrational, but that doesn't make it not a fear, of World War II memorabilia stories. Uh, it doesn't mean it's weird. It's all of it's irrational. It's weird. I know a lot about World War II. I think because I'm scared of it, I've tried to educate myself. And when I was a teenager, I got really fascinated with it and did a lot of research about it. But the actual, it just scares me a lot. I've had panic attacks in museums when I see World War II things. I will like literally have a panic attack and have to leave the museum. So it is a deep rooted fear. One, I wish I didn't have, but when I have. And so reading an entire book about World War II just does not interest me and I was too scared to do it. The second thing is I don't think that because you get a gift it means that you have to hold on to it forever. The point of the gift is to share love and to receive love. And that happened. Uh, I was very grateful for it but I just I didn't want to feel trapped by it and I know that I would never want to give someone a book and if they didn't want to read it, then feel trapped by it. So, I didn't read it. I'm very sorry, Raylene. I don't know where it is. I think it's in a donation shop, like in a secondhand shop somewhere in Ontario. Um, oops. So, that brings me to the end of watching my old book haul and I'm very proud of myself because actually I read the vast majority of them. The ones that I didn't want to read, I have donated. And so, good job! I, I thought I was gonna like watch that and have like eight books that are still sitting behind me and I'm like feeling guilty about, but I'm feeling pretty good about my choices. I love books and I'm happy to buy them for the rest of my life even if I don't read them. I intend to read them. I, I don't know. I, I don't, I guess I don't have to justify it. Honestly, I don't have to justify it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with buying books. <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope that you will check out some of the links that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Um, supporting the Black Lives Matter movement, supporting creators within our own community, and I will talk to you guys next time.